This is Michael Popak, and it's time for Legal AF After Dark. The United States Supreme Court, on at first blush, has uh, supported a woman's right to use the drugs necessary for a medicated abortion. That's the headline. 9-0. Uh, rejecting the lawsuit brought by the Alliance of Hippocratic Medicine, which is a made-up entity that was filed just for this particular lawsuit. But because the court only did it on standing grounds, it didn't reach the substance of the case, the merits of the case. All it is is an invitation for another case next term or so to come by so that they can, so that they can declare that the Federal Drug Administration, the FDA, overstepped its boundaries to allow women to have medicated abortions in their home. That's coming. We explain it all on Midas Touch Legal AF podcast. Take a listen. Let's talk about this FDA v. Alliance Mm -hmm. for Hippocratic Medicine case. It was decided on standing grounds, but this is the case where you and I talked about it when originally this MAGA judge in the Northern District of Texas, Matthew Kaczmarek, who's made a lot of rulings like this before and Prior to becoming a federal judge, he worked for a lot of groups that uh, basically wanted to ban all types of women's reproductive rights in, in the most extreme way possible. This is someone who's now a, a federal judge. And so when he got this case, he he made a ruling that Mifepristin is banned. It's uh, it can't ever be distributed or sold. And then it went up to, that ruling was stayed. It went to the Fifth Circuit. There were some uh, circuit conflicts as well. Another case was decided in Washington. Anyway, uh, the the impact of the rulings banning Mifepristin were stayed. It worked its way up to the Supreme Court finally. But here, the United States Supreme Court, um, notably, if, if our viewers are saying, this case involves the FDA and FDA regulations, <laughs> but Ben and Michael Popak, you just said that the Supreme Court is gutting any type of uh, regulatory actions by agencies. So how is the FDA's regulation in this case allowed to uh, persist? It was a nine to zero ruling. It's a unanimous court ruled that Mifepristin can be sold that the FDA, they didn't necessarily say that the FDA could do it, but they basically could have regulations to allow Mifepristin. But what the but what the ruling was is that the right wing groups that were that identified themselves as pro life groups, which that 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 terminology I never want to buy into. That's why I say they call themselves that that were filing the lawsuits against the FDA did not have standing to enter the court. So on a technicality ground, the Supreme Court threw it out, but they didn't reach the issue or or the merits of the case. So Mifepristin can be sold and distributed as it always has, Um, but I'll toss it to you. The Supreme Court seeming though to give a a, a somewhat roadmap for future litigants to try to find a way to ban it. Popeye. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a not as great as 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 mainstream media has reported it. Nine zero mifepristone has been no, it hasn't been anything. The um, the standing argument, which courts use when they don't want to reach the merits yet, Kavanaugh writing for the majority. The way I reconcile what you and I said earlier about the rollback of agency discretion and deference to agency action with this case is they never reached the issue of the agency action, and but they have invited a future case next term or while they continue to have the six to three majority in order to finally rule on the use of medicated abortion in the country having already taken away a constitutional right for a woman to choose. More than 12 states, I think 13 states, have banned abortion outright, meaning you can't use medicated abortion pills, mifepristone and its, its, its companion drug in those states. That was not touched by the United States Supreme Court. How you reconcile in a now a patchwork quilt country where it is literally uh, the North versus the South, basically, when it comes to women's rights and and women having equal rights. Kavanaugh, um, you know, 
created this standing argument, which he summarized as, what's it to you, literally? I thought it was like a New Yorker writing uh, the, uh, the opinion. Meaning, in order for you to have standing, you have to show that the governmental action and your injury, there is a logical chain that connects those two things. And if you have no injury, or you have um, governmental action, but no injury, or injury, but no governmental action, you're not going to be able to come into court and argue about it. And since none of these quote unquote doctors representing this AstroTurf company that was literally created and incorporated in order to bring this case. They were literally incorporated in the very town that this Northern District of Texas judge sits in. They didn't exist before the lawsuit. And I'm sure even though you can find them on their website, they don't really exist. It's this Alliance of Hippocratic Medicine, which I call the Alliance of Hypocritical Medicine, which is a bunch of doctors who, who did not prescribe mifepristone, who did not perform abortions on women who had some sort of mishap using mifepristone, but wanted to stop others through a national ban of of you of of prescribing mifepristone. And the capital was like, "What's it to you? You didn't do it. You, their argument was, well, if somebody um, uses it and things go awry, I may be called upon to provide an abortion that I don't want to have to provide." Then we're in the whole world of EMTALA, the emergency medical treatment, federal law about what has to happen in hospitals that that accept federal aid in terms of the life of a mother, which is going to come out in another ruling, I presume, next Thursday. We'll talk about the timing of these rulings, including the couple that we're waiting on. And the... Um, and the uh, um, the, so all of this is just an invitation for the future proper standing plaintiff to challenge the FDA having approved in 2000 this drug. Let me tell you straight. Um, Most women obtain abortions through medicated abortions through mail or telehealth. And that's this is the these are the products that you use. It has been determined by the FDA through years of study that it is safer than, not as safe, safer than aspirin or Tylenol for women or to use for this purpose. But when the right set of plaintiffs come together, oh, uh, which would be, I used mifepristone and something went bad for me. Or I was the doctor for a patient who used it and something went awry. They're, they're going to trust me. They're looking for that. They're looking for that plaintiff right now. And they will refile the case in front of Judge Kaczmarek again, because Texas will not recognize, despite there being recommendations by the federal judiciary conferences that there should not be forum shopping, Texas has said they're not gonna recognize it. So you wanna go file your case in front of the judge who used to be the general counsel for a um, right to life uh, movement, I'm not making this up, and has been public about his um, uh, being against abortion. Then you see in the opinion, uh, another opinion written by Clarence Thomas. It's another, I mean, I don't want to be rude, but it's another older male, childless male talking about women's reproductive rights and talking about, and listen to the language he used, Ben. I'm sure you saw it, you caught it. He talks about, he, he, he paints the world into two places, into two uh, divides it into two worlds. Abortionists, that's a phrase that had been used by people filing amicus briefs and in, st- and in different types of you know uh, ridiculous literature, but never apparently in a Supreme Court decision by a Supreme Court justice. So he calls the people that are in favor of a woman's right to choose abortionists. And with all of that, um, negative connotation and morality that's in, that's embedded in that. I almost said impregnated in that, embedded in that. And he calls the people that, that the women that go to, to a doctor, it's always performed by a doctor, uh, to, to, to have an abortion, a, uh, a client, not a patient. And he contrasts that with doctors who have patients. I mean, this, it's it just in the language that they have chosen, you see 
the 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 moral legislation that's going on the 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 church based sep, you know stuff that's going on at the court system and so i didn't i took cold comfort with the 90 like for now you know you can use mifepristone in the states where you can actually have some sort of abortion which are becoming more and more limited but there will be and you and i will talk about the next case that will come where standing is not an issue and then you're going to see them talk about um is there a right to use this and was the FDA right or wrong in its research and in the delegation from Congress down to the FDA and then we're right back to the administrative issues that you and I talked about one last thing on the supreme court before you move us to canon look how long they are taking to issue the ruling that we've been waiting for with the hope that if it comes out in one direction or another we can restart the DC election interference case against Donald Trump with Judge Chutkin. They waited till the last day of oral argument in April to hear the case. They could have done it any other time, a month earlier at least. And and instead of in we've had 3 days or 4 days of oral ar- of of decisions being issued. Okay? And we were waiting patiently. They said we're going to do two. We're going to do this past week. We're going to do Thursday and Friday. We're like, "Okay, Thursday, Friday. Here we go. Here we go. The first one comes out, you know, it's 90 mifepristone. Then the bump stock comes out. Then a few other ones come out. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Where is immunity? No. So now we got to wait till next Thursday. Right? To 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 get maybe the immunity and whether there's going to be a ruling on obstruction of congress which is two of the four counts for Donald Trump and was used against 300 Jan 6 defendants already including those that have been convicted and sentenced under it to determine whether that was proper or not we're going to wait till the very last gasp of this term meaning every day that goes by is one less day that judge chutkin has to get that trial up and running if even if she can before the november election yeah no the supreme court did everything in their power to make sure that the washington dc case by all accounts could have went despite donald trump's ridiculous absolute presidential immunity appeal who this right wing supreme court may not find ridiculous and may say that their definition of conservative is conserving the monarchy and reinstituting the idea of kings with absolute immunity we'll see what they actually rule but what's been clear is that they've done everything in their power to prevent intentionally the right wing supreme court to stop that trial from happening and they will release that ruling at the very last minute. And I think when they release it it will no matter what the outcome is, I think it will have strings attached to it that will even if there is no absolute immunity, which is a ridiculous con- the most ridiculous concept ever in the world to me, they will have Judge Chutkin in DC have to do some work that will also ensure that 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 there's no way that uh trial can ever take place before the election and that's what they want but look i mean the we know these justices i mean you have Clarence Thomas who's getting bribed like we know the right wing justice Clarence Thomas has been bribed over 4 million dollars by billionaires to get him to make rulings and for maga republicans that's okay and for justice john roberts that's that's fine we know that you have justice alito who violates the flag code but which which in and of itself is 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 an issue which is a violation of the law but flies upside down flags the sign of imminent distress to show solidarity with insurrectionists then blames his wife for it then flies the other insurrectionist flag at his new jersey beach house Then we have the audio recordings of of the kind of just dystopian ways of Justice Alito even talking about these things. Then we have the audio recording of his wife who I I don't know I don't know one way or another if she was a few drinks in or if that's just the way she is in general. I I don't want to assume one way or the other, but the way she communicates with people at the event is by meowing to them. and she goes hey meow 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 and and, and i'm listening to this and i'm like 
what, what, Yo, you're, me, you're, you're communicating via meows? The person's like, name was Cat, but I, did, I still doesn't give you the reason to go meow meow when you see the person. Yeah, I mean, your last name is Popak. I don't treat you like the Pope. I don't go, you know, I, I mean, I, I understand that the, I under, people have names. That doesn't mean that you go, meow, 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 meow. Hey, Michael Popak. Oh, what are we talking about? Anyway, go, go, going to judge, uh, going to judge Eileen Cannon, though, who fits the mold of a MAGA judge. Let me just set the stage super quickly of what she did. By the way, when you say Cannon, you don't go boom. Exactly. I don't go, hey, Judge Cannon, uh, boom, 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 boom. I mean, well, I mean, adults usually don't communicate via noises, uh, especially at the Supreme Court level at those types of meetings. But I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm. I mean, look, they do have shaman, you know, QAnon shaman, and oh, and I should mention uh, Clarence Thomas's wife being at the insurrection and then sending messages to Mark Meadows, uh, the chief of staff at the time, in like these like apocalyptic terms, like we need the armies from uh, from heaven to descend and dethrone and destroy, you know, by, I'm like, oh, there's some strange stuff. Anyway. Welcome back. We curate a show we like to call Legal AF, and now you know why. It's on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You can watch the YouTube version of the podcast right here on this Midas Touch YouTube channel. Free subscribe, really free. Helps get Help us get to 3 million free subscribers before the November election. Or you can pick it up on audio podcast platforms of your choice. We curate the top five stories at the intersection of law and politics. We bring it to you the only way we know how, without blowing smoke or sunshine. Nobody censors us on this network. This is an independent network without outside investors that we're building with your help, with our bare hands. So if you know all about Legal AF, take that clip, send it off to friends and family and people in your life and say, hey, I really enjoy Legal AF as a podcast. Maybe you can take a look and they can join our audience. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's an invitation to you. Join Legal AF, the podcast. You'll really enjoy it. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.